All right, this is for the championship of the world. We've already gone through all the instructions. I expect a tough, clean fight. Any questions from the challenger? Nope. Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. Can Norris take the pace of a tough, long fight? Meldrick Taylor sprints from his corner. The speculation is that a faster pace will favor Taylor. A slower pace might give Norris more chance to marshal his efforts for the knockout he wants to see. Body punching from Taylor to begin the fight. Stunning left hook to the body by Taylor. If the first round is to be a statement, clearly Meldrick Taylor wants to state that this will be a boxing match on his terms. Now Norris lands a short right hand inside. The more Taylor throws, the more he makes himself available for counter punches, and Terry Norris is a good counter puncher once he gets going. Body shot by Norris. Wobbled Meldrick Taylor for just an instant. Norris lands the right hand as they step apart, and now Terry Norris initiates an exchange for one of the first times in the bout. Both punchers landing effectively there. Terry looking much sharper in the last minute of the round than he did to start out. That was state-of-the-art boxing. He's wearing a red mouth guard. So if you see red between his lips, it does not necessarily mean there's blood. I think his corner, Taylor's corner, told him wrong to try to match jabs at this point of the fight with Norris because it's too long and he's quick with it. Norris's reach advantage, in other words, would give him the edge there. Meldrick following instructions from George Benton, though, is trying to jab. Norris trying to come over the top with the right hand. Four straight right hands by Norris. Good body shot by Taylor. But that is blood, I believe, now coming from Taylor's mouth already. One of the things that sent him to the hospital afterwards. A lot of times the mouthpiece is up. Solid killed. right hand by Norris, George. Prematurely, and he's not hurt. Again, Meldrick Taylor comes forward, and again, Terry Norris tags him with the right hand. Off with that right cross, George. There's the uppercut, and there's the uppercut again. Norris landed it twice. Meldrick Taylor appears to have set up a good round for Terry Norris here. Lansing blow with the right hand, but Taylor steps back. Well, I'll get you one later. George, what can Meldrick do to prevent Norris from landing that short, chopping right hand? Taylor's got to go strictly defensive, if you ask me right now. Stop trying to match punches with the guy. Now, here is Norris in his most effective early in the round. A straight right hand, and then followed by another one. But neither one budged Taylor. Keep that in mind, neither one budged Taylor. They certainly got his attention, but he hasn't just fallen over. Round three, WBC super welterweight champion Terry Norris defending his title against WBA welterweight champion Meldrick Taylor. Between rounds, George Benson told Meldrick Taylor to stick with the jab and you shook your head. No way, he's got to hit and move out of the way. Hit, move out of the way constantly. That's his only hope. Well, as they traded punches there, Meldrick Taylor got in a left hook that may have been his most effective blow. And now for the moment, Taylor seizes command and steps inside. Norris missing twice with the right hand. Left to the body by Norris. Right hand by Norris on the button. Meldrick doesn't have a lot of commitment to the jab, George. No, and he should never. He's standing still because his corner told him to use this jab. If they had told him to hit and run away, he would have a better chance at this point. I didn't get him low. Right hand lands. And Taylor sticks his tongue out at him and says, I took your shot. You didn't get me. Good left to the body by Taylor. Two of them in sequence. There's the right again, sneaking over the top of Taylor's left. And for the moment, the blinding hand speed of Meldrick Taylor has been neutralized as he waits outside for Terry Norris to step forward with power shots. Norris, I feel, is fighting the fight that Mildred Taylor should be fighting. 
As you heard his corner, they want him to jab his way and get in at close quarters where Taylor doesn't want to be. So again, Norris takes a full shot from Taylor. And again, Norris tries to come back. Right hand landed for Taylor. Good, solid left in close by Taylor. A right hand by Norris in exchange. Again, the right hand lands for Norris. Taylor's left, not there to block it. Overhand right. Taylor Wobbly. His last title defense, Meldrick Taylor was twice knocked down by Glenwood Brown. Of course, has invested into some good body shots also. Solid left hand. Meldrick swinging wildly, leaving himself wide open. Norris missed an easy shot. Plenty of time left in the round. The word on the back of Terry Norris's haircut is knockout. And that's what he's thinking about right now. Lou Duba yelling for Meldrick Taylor to clinch. But Meldrick keeps throwing leather and dropping his hands. Norris with the uppercut landed. He's trying to measure him and take a shot. It's about pure hard now. Come on, Meldrick. Skills went out of the window. Meldrick's still soul. wobbly in there, George. Put that jab up there. Should he be grabbing and clinching? He should, but he's got too much heart and soul. He's Philadelphia bred and trained. Doesn't know how to clinch. He thinks that as Norris throws, he's going to get a chance to land one in return. Norris with another solid right. Meldrick is woozy on the ropes. Second knockdown. Four, four, five. There'll be about 20 seconds left when the count is complete. Here comes Terry Norris to try to finish him off. There's no, there's no free knockdown rule. Keep that in mind. And there's no quit in Meldrick Taylor. A decision for Lane to make. He's very close to stopping it. And there it is. Rightful decision. <laughs> Only your heart. And only your memory can give you those instructions. And those shots, the first one was right on the, between the chin and the cheekbone.